Welcome to the Tough Fish Show. I am so excited to welcome back my friend, Meg Nachero. Meg, I am so glad you are here. I am so glad to see you. You are one of my favorite people. So I, this is a perfect opportunity to shed your wisdom along with mine. So yay. <laughs> you are one of my favorite people. So with that favorite stuff all going around, what have you been doing since we last interviewed on the show? Wow. Well, it's interesting. We were just talking that about, you know, if I've been focusing more, which is really great because I think I was so, had my hand in so many different pots for a bit. And also I have two beautiful kids that have been basically moved into college and moved into high school. So that as well. But as far as professionally, I've been doing my show manifesting with Meg, as you well know, you were one of my wonderful interviewees, guests. Also, it's a podcast, a YouTube. I've been working on that. I've also been organizing around my nonprofit and figuring out when that's going to happen. I had another book launch in May. Oh my gosh, so many things. I, I, it's a whole list anyway. But yes, my world is around how am I going to put my energy best bent toward the biggest bang for the buck, which is clearly beginning of the school year is a wonderful opportunity to do something like that before everything starts up again and you get to overwhelmed. I always say, put your ladder on the right wall. So that's what I've been trying to focus and figure out what I'm doing with regards to that. But, you know, all of these wonderful things, creating and fleshing out what it is that I see coming up for me and what I've done in the past. It's really a great time of year in this time in the beginning of the fall, you know, still very warm down here, but fall coming up to take a look at what it is that you've done and where you want to go and what direction you see yourself going. And that's basically what I've been doing. I love that. And I love how you say that really like taking that time, making a deliberate choice to kind of, what I hear you saying is kind of getting quiet and saying, okay, where am I? And where do I really want to go? And what does it take for me to get there? What do I need to do? Who do I need to be? What's going to be required of me to get to that next phase or that goal that I want to achieve. That's what I'm really hearing. Is that accurate? No, it's absolutely true. Yeah, you know, I'm a big person around the path of least resistance. And and I do believe though, before the momentum gets rolling, you know, where it becomes like very difficult to stop it if you're going in the wrong direction, <laughs> like kind of a ball, you know, the the stone on the top of the mountain that gets to picks up speed and you have to just wait till it crashes into a wall. I don't want to be there. I want to be at this point. I want to be getting ready around how I want to spend my time, like I said, and where I want to go. And absolutely getting still so that what we were talking about, next choice, I mean, it's an empowered one that I can bring to the table and feel good about what I'm doing. And more so, not that I don't feel good. I mean, obviously, life's full of ebbs and flows, uh, you know, things that don't go so well, things that go great. But I think at this point in my life, professionally as well as personally, I'm kind of looking at where I want to take, what do I want? What do I, what do I, what, and then what matches that with where I'm putting my efforts? Yes, I, I love that. And empowered choices or empowered by choice is what I, what we were chatting about ahead of time. And I, that just really speaks to me because, you know, when you are a, a writer and you have said, okay, I'm going to write this book and Yes, it's creative and yes, it's honing your, your craft and honing your writing, honing your abilities and so forth. But then once you hit publish, there are more choices that you need to be making. Right. How do you want to market? How, well, how do you want to publish? How do you want to market? How do you want to continue to show up and to grow, not just as a writer, but you're also a business owner. And how are you growing in that business? What are you doing to continue to let your light shine. And uh, uh, so what would you say to a writer who knows that they need to, they're ready to go to the next level. They are maybe even nervous about moving to the next level, but they know they need to. What would you say to them to help them kind of get grounded in saying, okay, I got to do this. I can do this. And then start taking action toward it. Well, I guess it really depends on where they are on their journey. And I, and I think that, you know, a writer, and I think people can journal, people can have books already done, they can have preliminary manuscripts. But I think that we have to at first see where you are on your journey and then literally ask them what is it that they want to do with this? Because it is their creative, beautiful 
input that they are actually putting to paper. So really it becomes, what do you want to do with what it is that you've invested your time in? And, and then how far along are you on the journey? Or if you're having any kind of blocks, sometimes, you know, you have a vision, you meet the vision, and then you're wondering, oh, I can't finish this. What, what's happening? Why am I blocked? Why am I stopped? And the question becomes, you really, like, I love that you said, you get still and you take a look at what's really speaking to you, which is really that internal, you kind of go within and find all the answers that you need there. But once you do decide, let's say you're finished with a book, a product is done, then, you know, depending, it might be something you don't really want to share, but then you want to share as well. Go to people that you trust to help you. And I love that. I don't know if you put it out there yet, so I'm not going to say the name, but go to people who have had the experience and have trusted results where you can really depend on for them if you're going to invest in it, because it's all an investment anyway into into that which you can trust to see them help you mold and figure out what it is that you want to deliver to the world so i think even and i and sometimes you do things and you're just like i love this idea what do i need get the very basics and then just put it out into the world anyway and then correct it as it goes along so there's definitely two ways to go about it but i will say this Don't let your editor on your shoulder get in the way of you actually putting it out there in the first place, whatever that is that's calling to you. So I I hope that answered your question per se. I think it's like, you know, it depends on where you are on the journey, I think, first and foremost. And secondly, why are you doing it? Why is this something that makes you come alive? Why are you passionate about this? Knowing your why, which I love, I, I have a lot of wonderful authors who I work with, always bringing you back to that. Why are you doing this? Why is it something that calls to you? Because the how will come if you know your why. So that, and that goes back to the end and then the choices we make, right? And then when we make those choices, what is based in understanding the why, then it becomes a very empowering choice because everything you do from that point on builds on itself. So it becomes this beautiful wonderful painting that you never even knew when the blank canvas was in front of you, what was going to be. And then you start to put your own touches in. Obviously, like added influences are those people that we ask for help along the way because no man's, no woman, no man is an island. And I think that in many respects, we do need each other so that it becomes the path of least resistance, the effortless flow. I love that. You know, sometimes when I figure I can do it by myself without asking, there's that component, ask, believe, and receive. Without that, then usually takes me a lot longer. Not that the lesson wasn't important, but once you know better, you do better. There you go. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And to your point, maybe writing and publishing wasn't as scary, or maybe it was, but the thing that's really scary is now that this book is out, You have to talk about it. You need to find ways to get more visible, whether it's podcast interviews or whether it's going to conferences. Maybe it's being a speaker at a conference or hosting a workshop or something like that. There's different ways that you're getting more visible. And going back to that, even that little editor, whomever that little voice is on the side that's sitting there going, really, are you sure that maybe we could do a little bit more work here? Did you polish that stone enough? Maybe we need to do a little bit more work, you know? understanding where that voice is coming from, but then going back to and remembering your why. Why did you publish this to begin with? Why were you so passionate about this to begin with? Is it, it, have you gotten it in the hands of your readers or in the audience that you were trying to connect with? Are there more people you could connect with? If all of those are things are going, yeah, there's more I can do, then taking those leaps and making those empowered choices to say, that I need to keep putting myself out there. I need to find other ways. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. You know, and one of the things that I love that was literally out of just necessity to help my fellow authors, I have two shows. I have my first, it's called Manifesting with Meg, which I've had for six seasons. It's coming up on the the seventh season at the end of the year. And that has always been, thank you. I'm so excited. It's been really kind of a labor of love, but I, it's, 
I'm a I'm a former federal prosecutor. So it's taking those skills that I learned and like used for 20 years in court asking questions and actually making continued use of them instead of doing it in adversarial fashion. It's a very healthy, uplifting and bringing out the wonderful things about people to share with others. So it's called Manifesting with Meg Conversations with Extraordinary People. The whole impetus behind it was I wrote a book called The Magical Guide to Bliss. I wanted to bring out the insights with each show and as well meet these really fascinating, interesting people to me and share their wisdom, their knowledge, and their story with other people. But when I published my third book, Butterfly Awakens, you know, I still wanted to have the conversations with authors that were specifically looking at the path of different authors. So I started an Instagram line that eventually went to my YouTube, but also called Amazing Authors, where it takes their book, highlights the book, and also allows the author to share a bit of their journey and, yeah. and who helped them and what helped them. Like I know, Jen, you helped so many authors really in embody the brand that they feel most authentically comfortable with. I think that's amazing. You have that gift. You have that experience. You do that. This show allows people who publish the book or publishing again, you know, to highlight that and what was the journey leading up to that? Because it can be very different with different books, for sure, because people do it differently, traditionally, hybrid, you know, self-pub. So I think with what you said, absolutely. I think once you publish and how are you going to get it out there and definitely different resources that you offer and many other people along in that in that book world offer that gets you on a stage or on a podcast or in a workshop. And all, you know, it's, and I, I said this to my, because, you know, I always contemplate when I'm having these wonderful conversations, I was thinking about my message that I might want to share that would align with yours. And, and one of the things that I thought about this morning specifically was the brand is you, you are, it's you. I mean, you might not like me and you're like, turn it off right now because I'm a little irritated by that you, but a lot of people out there might resonate or be inspired by that story that is becoming of you. Yeah. So with that in mind, don't be anyone who you're not because it's exhausting to keep up a show that it does not somewhat align with you because after a time, the imposter syndrome may take over more so than not. But generally people will speak to their own truth as to what they want to share with the world. And it really goes back to the fact that you are going to present your best foot forward based upon what you know up until this point and then certainly put it out there if you want to work with people as how to package you or how to brand you or how to style you then you do that because it becomes their expertise used to help you really shine like like Jen was saying so you know it's it's really interesting like looking back as to why I pick who I do when I interview them, why I want to have in conversation with some people or what will unfold and what do I know about it? Or do I do the research like a good lawyer would as to what I need to know? And, you know, I don't believe history dictates the future, but I definitely think it's sound uh, advice when you want to see what other people have done and then bring your own imagination into that. I love that. So talking about showing up and bringing your best self and, and owning that, how, however you're choosing to. But when you're doing that, you're enabling a podcast host, a, a, a host of a speaking engagement or a, a live event or what have you to really get a flavor of, uh, is this the right fit? And, and it's not always necessarily like if it's not the right fit, it doesn't necessarily, it's not a slam on either one of you. It just means this wasn't it for this space. Yeah. But I'm curious as a host for both, not just the podcasts and the interview spaces like that online, but you also host an in-person summit, workshop, you know, live event type things. What kind of things do you look for when someone says, hey, I'd like to be on your show, or I'd like to be involved in one of your events, one of your live events as a speaker or what have you? What kind of things do you look for? And what would you advise someone who is saying, okay, I think I might be interested, but I don't know where to start. Or I don't know what to do. 
It's a great question. I mean, <laughs> it's it's a great, no, it's absolutely a great question. And I think it's a really important mm-hmm. question when you you look at maybe particularly workshops or events that you want to be a part of and that you want to speak. And I think that really what's really important to me is the buy-in. The buy-in. Like you support that effort. I have loved working with people who are as equally excited about what I'm doing as I am. (laughs) I mean, they can't be me. And it's my baby. It's my idea. It's something that you know, my shine networking event happened when I was on stage with Oprah in 2014 and in this incredible energy. And I wanted to bring that incredible energy on a yearly basis back to my community where people are inspired and they are engaging and they're dancing and they're experiencing life and they're getting to know people who have that equal desire to learn about the life you want, which is what Oprah called her event. I wanted to continue that because not everyone could have gone to there, but I have been impacted. It made a difference in my life. So I wanted to do the same again and again for my community. And then it became a a nonprofit in that I give back in educational scholarships to other kids, kids who may not know this particular world, except for the fact that they are doing something and we're recognizing them. We see that. So going back to your, your question as to uh, what is interesting, nothing has ever happened for me unless I'm interested in myself. So, and I think that this goes across the board. You can't expect, like, I love this. You can't expect an author to respond to you if you don't know anything about the author, right? You can't expect anything to happen for you unless you know anything about that. It's not, I mean, unless you're a celebrity and everybody just wants to fangirl, which is fine, you know, that they have. And then that's a whole nother, you know, ball of wax that they're bringing in. They, they're following that they're bringing to you. If you have that person investing millions of dollars and that person speaking, hopefully is going to give you a return. But if we're talking about somebody who is making a name for themselves and trying to get their brand out there and, and their following bigger, if you know something about that person's workshop and are excited about it and know that you can bring something wonderful to it because you've experienced it yourself and you've had that experience, then you're going to be able to go further, certainly in planting seeds to get yourself on that stage if that's where you want to go. And I love the fact that some people think that I'll pay someone and they'll get me in the room. Well, you can do that. It's not guaranteed you'll get into any rooms. I mean, for sure, because you have to have that generosity of spirit. There has to be something that you're bringing to the table that will add to it. And, and I'll tell you, and I don't, you probably get this too, because your show, you know, if they know nothing about my show and they've never watched one episode at all, it's kind of like, what are you doing? You know, like what it's like, it's a preparation process, you know, like know your audience. We always tell the judges when we work in front of them, you've got to know your judge who you're in front of. You've got to prepare yourself before you go in front of them presenting your case. That's the same thing in life. It's it, it kind of goes throughout the same experiences you have in many different, you know, venues, backgrounds, whatever you're working with. It's all the same, right? If I know you, know who you are and get excited about what you're doing, like you, Jen, like certainly. I mean, we hit it off in the beginning, but I got I met you through another friend of mine. So it's like a oh, shout out to Leslie. And that's the beautiful thing about those beautiful connections we make. We help each other by virtue of, oh my God, you're going to love this person. That is much more impressionable to me when I'm interviewing someone to be interviewed, right? Than, you know, someone who comes out of left field and doesn't know anyone. It kind of goes back to the whole resumes thing. The, you have two resumes. One person interned with you, volunteer for whatever time. Just, you know, that person, same thing. Who are you going to pick? You like that person. You know, it's, it's the same. It's, so the doors open when you're knowing more about where you're going. And I, and I love the fact that that was a question of yours because I, maybe with regard to you, that you want to know that the person who's going to be talking to you for how long you're going to be interested in. 
I mean, I can't even imagine. Like, oh my God, get me through it. <laughs> you know, it like was nightmarish to me. It was like, oh God, you know, because we all choose back to the empowered choice how we spend our time, right? If we can. So very yeah, long answer to your very short question, but the same okay. thing becomes it's not rocket science. When you show genuine interest in what someone's doing and it resonates with you and it aligns with your passions, with what your why is, what what you want, then it's a whole nother ball game because it's not I'm I'm contacting you because I want something from you. It's more of a service exchange of service. So Yes. It's value. You're also showing the value that you can offer to that space. And when you are pitching a host for a podcast or when you're pitching to be a speaker at a summit or a, you know, doing a live workshop for a, a, you know, a, an event host or what have you, one of the things you're, to think about is the fact that you are helping that host, if you will, solve a problem. Maybe they are looking for guests or maybe they are they know they want to deliver so many things during their event or what have you and they also want to make sure that their audience is getting value and feels seen and feels heard and feels like this was a good use of their time too so when you are clear about what the host is trying to do how you can help them by helping the audience and what you'll provide for the audience, that is a great way to show that that you understand all those connections and how you can fit into that. Similar to, I mean, just like when, if before you published your book, if you sent a query to an agent, you didn't just take the same query and, and just copy and paste it and copy and paste it to send to, you know, three different, very different agents, you researched and said, is this the right agent? Why do I think they would be a good fit? How do I think my book might fit and that why they might be interested? You're crafting that query letter to be a bit more specific to that agent. And then you do it again for a whole nother agent because maybe it fits a little differently with somebody else, but you put time and effort into that querying process. It's the same concept as pitching a podcast or pitching to say, I would love to be a keynote speaker at the next Shine event or what have you. That's great that you're interested. Okay, how can we work together so that we're adding value to those Shine okay. attendees so that they feel like, wow, I love that. When is Meg doing that again? Because she brings the right people to us. That's the other part of that. And that's, that's kind of what I'm hearing of this. No, absolutely. And one of the things that we always do after our shine events, and we've had this is this will be our our seventh no, or sixth one outside of the shine event with the Camino. We were basing it in like the whole idea with high shine. One of the things we ask is a survey. What did you like? What did you not like? And and it really is to serve the audience, to bring inspiration to the audience, to have people like who bring value to the audience. Absolutely. And I know my audience, you know, and I, and, and, and I do because I've had opportunity and opportunity, opportunity to see who shows up, who is, who's engaged, who is excited. And, and it's funny because I've had, I love my, my shine committee. We wonderful people who volunteer and they do it because they love it and they want, want to be of service. And that really shine is of service. So the, the whole thing comes back around to the fact of, okay, what do we want? What's our theme? And then how do we speak to the people who show up? And what, what do you feel is the zeitgeist of the time that we're actually paying attention to the world around us as to, you know, a lot of people, and, and this year is going to be around wellness, mental wellness, physical wellness, a lot of ideas about how our dreams and how it's important to put the mask on ourselves first because burnout's a thing, <laughs> you know, things like that. And and any guest speakers I have are going to, like you said, provide good, solid solutions, but also be able to tell a really good, engaging story as to how they walked that path as well, so that they could give advice based in solid, foundational understanding because they've had to go through it themselves. I look for people who are not perfect, who literally 
besides the fact that they've dealt with, you know, what they've dealt with in their life, they still choose to show up and shine and don't give up on their lives. And that's really kind of at its core, very important to me because like we were talking about for, to motivate, to motivate someone to say, okay, go do, 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 do without sharing your story, without sharing that. Why am I telling you to go do that? To inspire someone is to present something that will change you so that anything you do from that point on is really making a difference from your perspective in your life that you can take into the world. Um, That, you know, that really is the networking that ripple effect that we have why we come together and then you never know what's going to happen in the world i'll never know like all the good that is done or the bad people i will never know every i probably will know the bad more than the good because people definitely make a point to tell you all that but the bottom line is that i will never know what people got from i what i get and what someone else gets totally different thing but we all bring our choice to come and our choice to present and the people that I, the speakers I choose, I have a vision that they, they fit. Plus it never hurts to have an amazing speaker and, and, and amazing by engaging, funny, like all of the above. But I always think about it this way too. I said, you know, what doesn't resonate with me might resonate with someone else. So there's always something for everyone, I believe. So yeah, and when I when I think about speaking engagements, a few things come to mind. One of which is that it's a product. When you are working your presentation, it is a product that you can repurpose, but you can sell that it's become a part of you, and you can use that as this is something that I do talk about, and that again, it still needs to solve a problem for the attendees. That's why they came. That's one of the reasons why they came is that they were hoping that this event or this podcast or this what have you is offering a solution to something that they're trying to figure out or that they need more encouragement from or what have you but the other thing is that thinking about that before experience that during experience and then that after to your point about being inspired you know that whole you feel great during that event and oh my gosh that was awesome and oh it was perfect and then you go back to your day-to-day and then it almost feels like okay yeah well now what do I do with that well I think that when you have crafted something and you're able to deliver it in a way that helps people to see this is a way you can move forward to apply it to the day when you get back to see how you can take it and grow. I think that's when some more magic happens because that's when more impact is happening. And to your point, you may never know all of the effects, all of the positive effects that what you've created has done. But I think, you know, deep down, when you feel really good, really excited about it, excited to talk about it, excited to share it, that that joy comes through too. And that joy creates its own form of a ripple effect that kind of, I think, just amplifies the messaging that's happening in it. Would you agree? I absolutely, no, absolutely. And always, a, there's always a narrative. And then, like we, okay, look, we're a lot of people who come to your show are authors, right? They're writers, they're, they're storytellers. Let's just be honest. So, like, they're always looking for a way to better tell the story of, of, of that they want to present for this time or for the next time or the next time. And the reality is, is that you need to be aware of the narrative that you're trying to relay to others, number one. But also, like you said, before, during, and after. There's a formulaic component where, you know, like, even with one of my books, in the books is, you know, the, co- the caterpillar, the cocoon, the butterfly. Everything has a process and it has to make sense. There has to be the art. There's the hero's journey per se. Let's speak to that right now with it. the whole idea, even with any events, it's that formula. It's everything that you do is that point because you want people to have, you know, engage in the intro and then start questioning and, and getting insightful or curious around the middle. And at the end, you know, what is their takeaway? Mm-hmm. It's, it's coaching 101. You have to make sure that the people that you're presenting to have a takeaway at the end of the day. It's just not about just everyone wants to hear and listen to you talk about whatever. People want to come away, like you're saying, specifically with something that will better their lives, right? That'll make their life more shining or more, you know, possible or more anything, you know? And, and I think that comes to pass when 
you're you definitely put the time and actually the process in and that's and it actually comes up with with speakers timing is everything but it's also luck as well so you know putting but that's what i always say it's really important that you put it out there and don't take it personally as to what what happens right because somebody might pass you over and it means nothing it has nothing to do with you it just happens to do with it that need is not being met I tell my kid all the time she's an actor you are you are you're a singer too you might not get that part because you're not with that person looking for at that time but does it mean that you stop and give it all up because just one thing happened you continue fine-tuning your message not for that person because that person's already looking for someone else but for the next person that you might resonate with because that particular event or workshop or podcast speaks to you what can you bring to it so yeah it's kind of exciting i i I love the questions that you have with regards this and like i'm thinking right now what is the takeaways that anyone would be listening to this when they're looking at events to pitch for or they're looking for podcasts to pitch for or they're looking for publishers or queries into who they want to work with well it's a it's not you're just not begging for someone's attention but if you actually put the time in before, then the during and the after are going to be a lot more fulfilling for sure, because you're paying attention to what's happening or like when you actually do it, which, you know, I, I one of the things I love about this show and the people that you do interview is that you always do focus on the takeaways at the end, what can be beneficial to your audience. And and it really does become the kind of give and take for sure. And, and, and certainly you offer a lot of value when it comes to getting people to the next step in their path. So that's always a beautiful blessing as well to listening, right? Cause there's something that you bring across that they can take and they can, you can make their life easier, right? People, people want their lives to be easier, not easy, but easier. Like we know what we have to do in the learning process. You know, the learning curve is kind of rough sometimes, but when someone's like, oh, this is going to, you know, help you. And then and it might, because I hear what you're saying and this resonates with you. And you're just like, oh, thank you. It's not as hard as it can be. Right. So there you, you go. feel seen. You feel like somebody really gets it. And, and if they have navigated those challenges, that it's possible for you too. And does it mean that it will be easy for you? It doesn't mean that you'll run into the exact same things that they did. It just means that you're not alone and that you can make this happen and there are other people who get it and sometimes just knowing that too that there are other people who really do understand so there's a form of community in a sense i think that that's a a blessing too yeah that's that's probably one of the things that you probably find i certainly do myself is the community that follows and it's really a beautiful thing because i think they always say what's i don't think they use it anymore but what's your your rolodex right who's on your rolodex and like if i come contact you maybe you can't help me but you know someone who can you know, that community, you, when you network and you engage and you put your name out there or whatever it is that you're doing, you, you build on that circle, that wonderful creative circle of life that as long as I'm alive, I get to do that. And that's exciting for me. I, and I, you know, respecting other people and in, in, in their, their strengths and certainly kind of collaborating. And that's wonderful. I love that you pointed that out because that is a beautiful thing of of stepping out of your comfort zone into the world that you don't know because you're not going to be like that forever. (laughs) Like you won't know it forever. You know, once you do that, that is done. That first step is passed and you're moving in a a direction where your world's opened up a little bit, you know, and, and that you, you can navigate a little differently because you've taken that effort to, to find out and be in tune with other things to minimize the fears and to, make possibility abundance for certain. I love that. Meg, I so love time with you. It is so awesome. Where can people connect with you? Where can they get your latest books? Where can they find out about when you're having in-person events so that they can like get on your attendee list and and be in your world more? Well, thank you for that. I definitely have all my information on my website megnosser.com my social media i'm always posting on there as well if my website's not completely updated then it'll definitely be in my facebook or my social media you know my in-person events i i always and sometimes i plan things around people that i love so you know it's kind of interesting because i want to be able to play in that you know that sandbox with them a lot more so i wouldn't be surprised if i would see 
Jen, per se, in one of my events. God knows. I always put it out there, you know, put it out there so that, you know, things can unfold, unfold accordingly. So, yes. Yeah, so basically my webpage, magnosero.com and my social media, which is Facebook, Instagram, is all under Magnosero. And, and I love to get into the nitty gritty and collaborate creatively and, and to engage. And that's what Shine's all about. It really is for me. It's to bring that inspiration and be in a community and engage and collaborate to make something really beautiful and connect people. So that's always been one of the things that I love the most, for sure. It inspires me. It gives, it fills my cup. So it's kind of that wonderful karmic circle of life, the give and take, where just saying yes to the things you love, you get more things to say you're thankful for, for sure. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for being on the show. I am so glad you came back. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't wait to see all the amazing, wonderful things that you continue to do. Thank you.